places and other workplaces start to reopen, pet parents might notice that your pet is suddenly behaving strangely due to separation anxiety. Now, when we think of separation anxiety, we usually think of dogs, right? Not cats, because they're supposed to be like so independent, but that's actually not necessarily the case. So today we are here with Samantha Bell from Best Friends Animal Society to talk about this and more. Thank you so much for being here. You have a little cat convention happening. Thank you for having me. Just so perfect. In Introduce us. What's going on here? It was perfect time. Just as you said, people think of cats as independent. You've got two around you. I've got three around me. They're not that independent. This is my foster kitten, Wanda, and her brother, Vision. They're about three weeks old. Look How at these perfect videos. is that? Oh my goodness. And they're just examples of what what's called kitten season, right? Yes, it is. It, it, kitten season exploded here in Los Angeles uh, a couple weeks ago, and, or about a week ago. And now there are just kittens everywhere. But look yeah. how cute they are. And you it's get to such cute overload. I can't handle it. It is. And these two are especially cute and they drink their bottles so nicely. So yes, you can. They look great. Horrible For three kittens. weeks, they look kind of big. Yeah. Wonderful. And who was the orange, the orange cutie? <laughs> That's Johan. Come here, Johan. Um, this is, come here. He's right here. He's like, hello, here I am. That's Hi, Johan. Baby. He's my <laughs> kitty. I have, I have three. I have three, three boys. Oh, I. oh nice. Love it. <laughs> oh, wait, here's another one. This is, uh, this is Sydney with her crazy face. She's a cancer survivor. She had a nasal tumor. She had radiation and uh, at Blue Pearl Hospital here in the city and in New York City. And she's doing great. Well, she's, she's three. Beautiful. She's, yeah, isn't she great? She's three years in remission. So this is all from the, the radiation. Uh, and oh. she has a cataract as well, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt or anything. And she's really, she's really doing great. Knock wood. Thank God. She's uh -oh. really she is a little survivor. What a doll. Oh yeah, my well, God. And she was love only three her. years old. She was only three years old oh, when she got cancer. Are you biting me? What is going on? Oh, craziness with the cats. Okay. So we have codependent cats, clearly not independent cats. So tell us how, what does separation anxiety look like in cats? So, you know, like you said, it's not as common with cats as it is with dogs. I don't know, have you seen, there's a meme that was going around, you know, right a couple months ago and it was the dog is like, oh, please never go back to work. And the cat's like, please get out of here. And right. a lot, so that stereotype of cats not wanting you home is something that is actually not true with almost everyone that I know. If mm -hmm. you are providing a great environment from your cat, if you're up, have a positive enriched home and you're not forcing things upon them, they're going to love you being home and, and they are not going to want you to leave. And in that case, there are some behavior, some undesirable behaviors that we see when you go back to work. You might notice that they're whining. We've got a little whiny baby over here who's just mm -hmm. whining because she's a baby. But there are some adult cats that when you leave the door, they might do a lot of whining. There are some that might start scratching things that you do not want them to scratch or chewing on things. I've got a bunch of chewers. Um, there's some, you know, just, just destructive behavior. They could be over grooming where they groom themselves so much that the fur is gone and they're kind of chewing away the fur and the skin from stress. They could be under grooming where they're just so depressed that they don't even want to clean themselves. There could be a change in appetite. They could all of a sudden just be starving or not want as much food. And then also there's those dreaded change in bathroom behaviors of not going in the litter box. And a lot of the times the reason you see that is because you're gone and they want to mix their scent with ours because they miss us. And what is what has the most powerful pheromones and scent of theirs is their urine or their feces. So they want to put it on the bed or on the couch or somewhere where they can smell us and mix those scents together. It's important that we that pet parents first of all recognize that this is separation anxiety because I think a lot of people when they see destructive behavior as humans we get angry and we right. say no you know we we get we we express anger toward the animal and um just talk about that a little that you know is is that I would assume not the the right way to go 
I'm so glad you brought that up. That is such an important topic because you yell at a cat or or punish them or maybe some people might squirt them or you know yell or something all that does is break the trust that you have with that cat their brain is not wired for punishment what you need to do is figure out what caused that negative behavior and work to prevent it, work to provide alternatives for that. I have so many people that message me and say, my cats are chewing my plants, what do I do? And you, you think, okay, they have to chew, it's instinct. So you need to provide something for them to chew that's appropriate because if they don't have anything, they're gonna find something that's accessible and easy. So instead of correcting or yelling at or getting upset with cats, we have to change our behavior they're living in our world. You know, cats are still a little bit wild animals where dogs are 100% domesticated. Cats still retain a lot of wild instincts. So when they do something that you see as negative, we want to fix the world that they live in to help them be able to do the right thing. They want to do the right thing. They don't want to destroy things. They just, they have to do it. And so you want to give them something appropriate to chew like right. cardboard talk about solutions. So we have a list here and let's run them down and you can really describe it. Okay. So number one, this seems so obvious, play with your cat, but be specific. What does that mean? I want to hunt, catch, kill. They need to. It's in their instinct. They have to hunt, catch, kill. And if you send the, if you throw a little toy, they can hunt, catch, kill it for maybe two seconds and then it's dead in their mind. So if you get a wand toy with, you've got the stick and then on the end, you know, it's got like a little wire or, or string or something. And then at the bottom, there's hanging from it, something that reminds them of prey. And you want to see what your cat's prey preference is, which is really cool. You take one toy, maybe one has a mousy type thing on the end. Maybe another has a feather that kind of flies through the air. Maybe another looks like a wiggly bug. And try all the different types of prey and find out which one really your cat goes really for. And, you know, for example, I have one cat that likes bug type things. When I show him the mouse one, meh. When I show him the feather one, meh. But if it looks like a bug, he gets really excited. So sometimes people are like, my cat won't play. And it's really just a matter of working to figure out what their prey preference is. And if it is a mousey at the bottom that they like, make that prey move the way a mouse would. It would be on the ground and it would be scurrying and it would go around a corner. So you have to be kind of dorky and really play into that pretending like acting like it's the prey. If it's a feather, you're gonna make it fly around and then like flop to the ground like a bird that just fell from the sky and then they go and get it. So you really, we have to work to help them play. And for how long should the play sessions last? I would say I recommend 15 minutes once a day. You can okay. do it while you're watching TV because that you can make it, you know, kind of go around like this and, and, you know, you can do it, like take a break at work for 15 minutes and, and do the little wand toy time. You will see such a dramatic improvement in your cat's behavior, demeanor, health, everything, because we, you know, I, I know in New York and especially here in LA also, you can't let the cats outside. It's way too right. dangerous for, for cats to be outside with traffic and, and predators and bad people out there. So cats have to live indoors. So they're not getting a chance to hunt. And a lot of times when you see issues in behavior and health, it's simply that the cat is just stressed and bored and they just need to hunt. And if you do that 15 minutes a day, even 10 minutes where you get them out of breath, where they're, if you can get them doing that, you're good. Even if it's like a five minute session where they're out of breath, you just want to get them out of breath. All right. Number two, adjust routines. Oh, okay. This is, this, I can tell you, for example, uh, working from home, I'm, cats like small meals several times a day. That is their preference. They don't want one big meal once or twice a day. In the wild, which their instincts still are, they would eat a bunch of little like mice or birds or something, little tiny things several times a day. So I'm like, oh, I am, you know, working from home. I have the opportunity to do this. So think uh, little tiny bits of their wet food. I've been doing like four or five times a day and they are happy as can be. Can I sustain that when I go back to work? No, absolutely not. So I need to change that up and start doing three times a day meals at the times that I would do when I go to work. Before I go to work, when I come home from work, 
I want to go to bed. Those three meals. So just start thinking about what your schedule is like when you're at the office and pretend that you are. You know, it's a really, a really good tip I read. It was actually a dog, a dog behaviorist that had said, have a specific area in your home that is your desk that you work out and that you work at. And that is not a place of cuddle time and play time. It's, it's where you sit and work. You don't wanna sit and work on the sofa or on your bed where the cats think, oh, this is a place where we hang out because you're, you're hanging out with them all day. But if you're at your desk, you can kind of put yourself in the mind of like, I'm at work and this is, you know, I normally wouldn't be home for them and just kind of start preparing them to not get attention 24 seven. And in terms of adjusting the food, um, yeah. you should start doing that uh, at, at what point, like a week before you go back, to, you think you're going to go back to work two right. weeks? Right now. <laughs> Months before. Yeah, as soon as, soon as, as you can. Yeah, as soon as you see this video. Okay, good. You always want to take him to the vet right away because cats are so good at hiding physical ailments that... Um, you won't know that there's maybe they're having kidney issues or it's early onset diabetes or something like that where there's just a little change in behavior. Oftentimes when they are over grooming, it could be an area that is actually internally bothering them there. Maybe mm. it is where their kidneys are and they're over grooming there just because they don't feel right. So when as soon as you notice a change in behavior like over grooming or under grooming, even not using their litter box. With cats, you always want to just go to the vet first to rule out medical because sometimes a cat could have a UTI or it could have a, a bladder issue where they're blocked. And it, it is something life-threatening where, you know, all the behavior modification in the world isn't going to help them. They need a vet and they need meds. So if you notice over grooming or not using the litter box, it may not be in conjunction with separation anxiety. It may just be a physical problem. So any, any change in behavior, always, always get a visit to the vet. Right. If it has station, great advice. Thank you so much. And I just, I love the cuties. Look where they're so cute. Yeah, I still got one in my lap. And thank you for fostering and taking care of these babies because, uh, you know, oh, you're literally it. saving lives. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, it makes me so happy. I'm the happiest when I am up in the middle of the night bottle feeding a baby. <laughs> I love them. I love it. And thank you for all you do, too. Thanks. Fanny. Say hi, Fanny. Bye, beautiful. Bye, Fanny. Thanks so much, Samantha. <laughs> thank you.